Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Reverend Ramona Guadalupe. This ministry comes to you from the Hats of the House Church Ministry and the Promises of God. It is a bilingual ministry. I pray that you'll be blessed today. Bienvenidos a todos. Yo oro que este día que el Señor te vaya bendiciendo en este culto. Este ministerio viene de las promesas de este Dios. Mi nombre es Pastora Jamona Guadalupe. Y este ministerio es en el inglés y en español. Esta media hora yo oro que el Señor te vaya bendiciendo este día. Vamos para el libro de Apacaliste, capítulo 22, versículo 12 hasta 16. So, beloved, again, another week that God has made this possible for you to be present. Let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 12. Let's go there right now, which many of you already know and can recite this by yourself. And the word reads, look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me. I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the alpha and the omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gate into the city outside our dogs. Those who practice magic art, the sexual immorality, the murderers, the idolatrous, everyone who loves and practice falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. May the Lord add a blessing to this reading. So, beloved, many of you, it's been a, a quite a year, quite a year. But I want you to remember one thing that you made it today. It's because God loves you. He has a word for you today. Let's go to the book of Psalm. Let's go to the book of Psalm 112. And I read this to you, I believe, the other day to you. But my spirit moved me to read it to you today. Vamos para el libro de los años 101.12. Uno, dos, y la palabra dice. Oh, there. One, twelve. And the word reads, Psalm 112 to 110. Praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his command. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generations of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their house, and their righteousness endures forever. Even in darkness, light dwells for the upright, for those who are gracious and compassionate and righteous. Good will come to those who are generous and lend freely, who conduct the affairs with justice. Surely the righteous will never be shaken, they will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure that they will have no fear. In the end, they will look and triumph on their foe. They have freely scattered their gift to the poor. Their righteous endures forever. The horns will be lifted up in honor. The wicked will seethe and be wet. They will gash their teeth and waste away. The longing of the wicked will come to nothing. May the Lord add a blessing to this reading. Let's go into prayer. Blessed Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus the Christ that he gave his life for his church, the people. We are the children of your pastor, blessed Father. Look upon us with gracious and love and mercy. Thank you for making this day possible that we are able to come and gather together with our families and friends and those who are viewing from around the world that you glorify yourself because you have a word for them the word of love and compassion and mercy and gracious. Glorify yourself as I stand before your people and you. 
Give your servant the words that your people would hear. Fill your servant with your Holy Spirit with power and strength. And let my heart be acceptable to you. In the name of my Lord, Jesus of Christ of Nazareth, amen. So beloved, another day, another blessed day that Jehovah God made it possible. Jesus watched over you. You are here today because Jesus has a word for you. He woke you up. Even if you're homeless, even if you lost your home, even if you lost your everything, your job, God has always provided resources that you could go to find shelter, get a hot meal, someone that will hold you, will give you a hug, someone that, that will say, hey, God loves you. And he understands and he knows what you're going through. Just like the song, one, 100 and, uh, 112, that God knows where you are. You know, it reminds me of King David that he says that God, wherever I go, you know where I, everything he knows. He knows the words of our mouth before we even speak it. So beloved, here is a reassuring the love of God. Let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 1 through 14. But I'm not going to read to you the whole thing. Here is Jehovah. On the same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals. And I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, the Lord, the blood will be a sign for you on the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destruction plagues will touch you. When I strike Egypt, this is the day that you are to, to commemorate for the generations to come. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, an everlasting ordinance. May the Lord add a blessing to this reading. Eso fue del libro de Exodus, capítulo 12, versículo 1 hasta 14. What is happening here? Jehovah God is going to strike down the firstborn. What is happening here? Okay, let me give you a little bit of history about why Jehovah God did this. Jehovah God born the first plague to Pharaoh, the leader in Egypt. He brought blood frogs, gnats, flies. The last livestock was struck down to death. Plagues, um, hail, locusts, darkness, and then he strikes the firstborn. That was the last plague that Jehovah God did to the oppressor. And again, which many of you I've heard when I preached about Moses and Aaron, when Moses went over to Midian, which is today modern day Saudi Arabia. But Jehovah God called Moses. Moses was 80 years old. Aaron was 83 years old. When Jehovah sent them to the Pharaoh, and keep in mind that the Pharaoh this pharaoh didn't care about what happened, the blessing that the previous pharaoh did for Joseph's family, for the Hebrew people. It got to the point that they had been enslaved in Egypt. Moses was born in Africa. Many of the Israelites, when they left, when they left Egypt, it was over 6,000 men not including women and children. Finally, when Jehovah God proclaimed the last plague to Egypt, 
because the Pharaoh refused to let God's people go and worship him. God gave all these signs. He gave blood. The first thing was blood. Then um, frogs, nuts, flies. He killed all the, the livestock. Hail, plagues, locusts, darkness. And then finally, God says, okay, enough is enough. He's going to learn that I am God. The book of Exodus, it shows God's strength because God created everything. The glory of God is all around us. We are God's glory. He created us. But when oppression comes and murderers come and abuse, injustice that has fled away, God sends a man in his 80 to bring over through the desert over 6,000 men, not including women and children. So that must be, oh, a lot of people. God saw the justice, murderers, and liars. That they did not care for the people. They abused them. They didn't care for them. Jehovah God is a God of love, God of compassion. But at the same time, God will strike you. Oh, yes, he loves us. But God is the God of justice. Look how many chances he gave to this Pharaoh. And he refused. He refused to humble himself. God gives us chances. In the book of Matthew chapter 18, let's go there, chapter 18. The gospel according to, to Matthew. Chapter 18, verse 15 to 20. He talks about the sin in the church itself. How to deal with that. Now, God doesn't want us to strike anyone because God is the one that's the judge. When we do wrong, God wants us to take care of the problem. And sometimes God will bring someone to correct us. And if that person don't listen, of course, we don't go striking down and killing anyone because that goes against God's way. God is the judge. The sin of the church itself, when a brother and sister, and I want you to remember this, put away all those titles, because in, when it comes down to it, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Those who want to be addressed with all title, fancy, you know, that's, that's okay. But when it comes to time, hey, we are brothers and sisters. God would judge the church first before he judged the world. The world right now is in chaos. Just recently, a man out of hate killed black people because of the color of their skin. Black and brown, he didn't care. They are those who hate people that are different. But keep in mind that Moses is African. The Hebrew people that came out of Egypt, because when they went into Egypt, it was only 70 of them. And when they came out of Egypt, the Hebrew, they were over 6,000, not including women and children. These were children born in Africa. So they are African. Because of people's hate, where they come from, God would judge each and every one of us. And this including the church too. There is no division in God's ways. God is a God of justice. He doesn't care whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're different color. He doesn't care. He cares that you do what is right to your fellow man. In the church, when someone sins, you let them know. They don't listen. 
talks about bring God is God is in a he's a judge. This is a, just picture a, a court. Bring witness, okay? He's telling us to bring a witness if that person don't listen, because everything it will be bind in heaven that the person did not listen to you when they sinned. See, God is the God of judge. He's a judge, God. That's why he tells us not to judge. Jesus said, do not judge now. Brothers and sisters, when we do wrong, and this including doesn't matter who you are, whether you're white, whether you're black, God will judge each and every one of us for the wrong that we have done, especially those who are in leadership. God will judge his church before he judged the world. Here was this Pharaoh, so stubborn. God gave him a lot of chances, and then he changed his mind. He didn't want to let the people go. He wanted to abuse them. So my question to you is, and I'm talking to the church itself, the church of Jesus Christ, that he talks about this in the book of Revelation. God sends his angel to give the message. He told John when he was in prison to write these things for the church, to the angel of the church. You know, there had been so much hate going on. God is into history, just like I showed you. That God is a God of justice. You do wrong. He tells the Hebrew people, remember when you were in slavery, that God rescued you. In other words, understand what it is to be oppressed. When people mistreat you, God is the God that will judge those people or whoever mistreats you. Whoever has hate in their heart, God will judge them. Pray for them. Pray for them. But God will judge them, beloved. Because the God that I just finished reading to you, that God had to strike down. The firstborn of Egypt, including the animals. But here was the Hebrew living in Goshen. Africa. When God did all this horrible thing to let the Pharaoh and their leaders know, I am God, you're not in charge. The Hebrew lived in Goshen. Not even a hair of the head fell onto the ground. When everything went was going on, hail and storm, nothing happened to the Hebrew people in Goshen, not in that town. Nothing happened there in that town. It goes to show that God will spare you when an injustice is occurring. Don't take revenge. God says, revenge is mine. When people decide to go into a store, to a community, or to hate your neighbor and shoot them down because of the color of their skin. Oh, they're going to go right with you. God makes it perfectly clear he's a God of justice. Do right and do, don't do wrong. It is sad. You know, it reminds me of the situation that has occurred in... Um, just recently, just recently, it has occurred that what has happened in Hawaii, it is devastating. It is sad what has happened to them. It is really sad. And then you have vultures that want to take their property and, and buy their property. God says, and one thing is to have to let you know, never take anything that has not been given to you because it's not going to go well. But there, in, in, in all that chaos, there was one house 
that was not burned. There was one house. And let me tell you, many of you saw the pictures and the films and the video. Horrendous. The people were saying, I mean, it killed everything. It burned everything up. But there was one house that didn't get burned. And of course, they say that, oh, it's because they renovated the house and they did construction. Sometimes I wonder, I wonder why that house was left there without being touched by the, by the fire. I wonder, here was the people of Hebrew living in Goshen. When all this plague went around, they were not hurt. Not even the livestock, livestock and the fields, nothing. God talks about justice and love. The epistle letter from Paul to the Rome, to the Roman. Roman chapter 13, verse 8 to 14. Wake up. Wake up. And show love. Because by love, it fulfills everything in God's eyes. It fulfills everything. This is why Jesus Christ hung on the cross, on the disgraceful cross for you and I. And those who are preaching Christian nationalists, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Because the Jesus that I bring, the, the Prince of Peace, and Jehovah God with his mighty hand, the first thing of knowledge is to reveal God, to fear God. Everything that you see before us. I mentioned many times, if God does not cut these days short, no one will survive. In Peru, in Egypt, in different parts of the world, China, even in North Korea, Devastation of flood in Canada, fire in all Latin American countries, and then lawlessness. Continue to show love in spite of it all, because with that, you are fulfilling what Jesus has given to us to love one another. And, and let me tell you, let me make this clear love is not love, because I love to eat. I do. I, I just love to eat. I love ice cream. But the love that I'm talking about is a love of compassion that surpasses all understanding. Even if you've done wrong, forgive them and love them because Christ died for that person. Love them. Even though sometimes it's difficult to do that. It's difficult to do that, beloved, because I know. Forgive them and love them. And pray for them. Never take revenge. God is a God that, that does take revenge. Those who do wrong and injustice. In the book of Exodus, it talks about that. That's why Jehovah God told the Hebrew people, remember when you were in Egypt as slaves, that I brought you out with a mighty hand. And those who are suffering right now, in spite of it all, remember that God has made possible resources. It doesn't come. God uses people, yeah, to take care of his people. God hears your cry. Believe me, God hears your cry. And even if you cannot speak, he hears the cry of your heart. God cares for you. It doesn't matter whether you're white or black. You do injustice. We will be held accountable. And the first place that God will judge is his church. Let's pray. Blessed Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for your people. I pray for justice and love and compassion and forgiveness, blessed Father, that we sin all the time against our brothers and humanity. Father God, protect your people. And those who want to continue to use weapon, Father, that you fizzle those weapon down and melt them on their hands. Glorify yourself, Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, because it doesn't make any difference whether you're white or black. You people do injustice, they will be held accountable. 
But God, you're the God that is able to change the hearts of each and every one of us. That you get all the glory just like you did with the Pharaoh. You show the Pharaoh that you are God. But because of the love and compassion that you have for your people, not only the Jewish, but all people from all nations, that's what Jesus Christ died, Father. So I ask of you that you glorify yourself. Change the heart for those who have stony heart like the Pharaoh. You're able to do that and submit that they will submit to you and that you get all the glory. So I place your people into your hands. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, watch over them, protect them, and all the children, Father, from the hands of themselves and the hands of adults. I pray for the President of the United States, Joe Biden, and his administration. Protect them and his administration. Give him the strength, just like you did to Moses, that he was 80 years old and Ari was 83. Give him the strength to minister to the people of the United States, not only the United States, but around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. After la semana que viene, que sea bendecido en nombre de Jesús de Nazaret. Amen. Until next week, stay blessed and safe and pray for one another. In Jesus' name, amen.